This video is about the input function, the input function. Now the input function is another of the built-in functions that are built into Python itself, just to give shortcuts to features that are used a lot. So let's go and look at them again. So we will type in built in uh, function Python, because Python is the name of the language. And we go there, top hit, and here's a list of all the built-in functions. There's about 70 of these built-in functions. I've already done a video on print, so if you don't know what print is, please uh, go and look at that video. But today I want to talk about input, which is right here, the input function. So let's go to gcsecs.com. And when we get there, hover over contact slash more, click on code editor. Okay, I'm going to delete these comments and just slide the this reservation across. So let's make a variable called name. Okay, and if you don't know what a variable is, then you need to watch my video on that. And let's say your name is Dave. All right, so there is the string Dave is inside my variable called name. And to make my code a bit more exciting, I'm going to print whatever's in the variable called name. Let's see if that works. Okay, and so it out, it's output Dave, so that works. But the thing is, not everybody is called Dave. This bit of code works really well if your name is Dave, but if your name is not Dave, then this is not gonna work. You probably wanna input your name if your name is not Dave. So let's see how input works. So we're gonna get rid of this, because my name's not Dave, and instead we are gonna put the input function. And as always, this function also has some brackets empty it first. Well, what are we going to put in the brackets? Let's put, how about this? Enter your name, okay? And you can either put a colon, then a space bar, and then we'll run that, and if you like how that looks, you know, that's not too bad, or you can change it. I prefer the greater than, greater than, greater than uh, symbols. Run that, and there you go. It's displayed, enter your name, and let's say your name is Bob, and then you press enter, and it displays Bob, okay? So, what's going on here? What does the input function let you do? Well, it does two things. Firstly, you'll notice that there is no print, there is no print function on line three, but still, even though there's no print function, it is displaying enter your name, which is a string, enter your name. So input is displaying enter your name to the screen, okay, so that's one thing. Second of all, it's allowing the user or the human being to enter data via the keyboard, okay? And those are the two things that the input function does. Number one, it displays a string. Number two, it allows the user to enter data via the keyboard. And whatever you en enter in, in, uh, as part of this input function will be stored inside the variable name, because that's what variables do, okay? That's what variables do, they store uh, values or expressions. And that's it. So just to make my code a bit more exciting, I might drop in a string in here and say, hi. And then we'll run that again. And it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, because I didn't put the comma. Yeah, definitely got to put the comma. So we'll run that again. And let's say your name is Bobby. And it says, hi, Bobby. Okay, so the input function now makes your code a bit more exciting because it allows users to enter details into your code, into your program. So let's have a go at this task. Here's a task. It says, registering for a PlayStation or an Xbox online account, okay? And that just means you've got a brand new PlayStation 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, or a brand new Xbox, and you're logging in to set up so your Xbox or PlayStation knows about you, okay? Here's what I'd like you to code, okay? Ask you the user to input a username and store it in an appropriate variable, okay? Which is a pretty standard. Most apps or games or whatever will ask you for a username. Number two, 
ask the user or the human being to input a first name and store it in an appropriate variable. Okay. Number three, ask the user to input a last name and store it in an appropriate variable. Okay, so we've got username, first name, and last name. Okay, spoiler alert, you might need to use a particular function. Number four, display the string. Please confirm your details are correct. After that, display the string, your username, and then it should display wherever the human being entered. Okay, so if I entered my username as, um, you know, Dave the Great, then it should say your name is Dave the Great. Number six, display the string your first name is, and then it should say whatever my first name is, or whatever the human being entered. Number seven, display the string your last name is, which should output whatever the human being entered or the user. And then finally, display the string, are these details correct, with a little Y or N. And then, you know, I like the greater than symbols, but you can go for the uh, colon. And that's it. Have a go at that task. The answer is coming in three, two, one. Okay, so here comes the answers. I'm just gonna paste the code in. We'll run the code and we'll talk through the code. So there we go, it says enter a username. Uh, let's go with that guy. Enter your first name. Uh, let's go with Davey. Enter your last name, McBobby. Uh, please confirm your details are correct. Your username is that guy. Your first name is Davey. Your last name is McBobby. Are these details correct? There we go. So what we've done is we've coded um, pretty much every form we've ever had. If you sign up for an email or a PlayStation account or some app or whatever it is, they'll ask you the same questions. And here you can see how it can be coded. So let's go through the code. On line two, you've got a variable called username. And inside that variable, you've got the input function, which is displaying enter a username. Uh, enter username is a string. On line two, you've got a variable called first name. Inside the variable, you've got another input function displaying the string enter your first name. On line four, you've got a variable called last name, which, and inside that variable, you've got the input function displaying the string enter your last name. And the first three variables are, or, or inputs are allowing the human being to enter the data into your program. And those data are, are stored, uh, that data is stored in the respective variables. Line five is just an empty string to create this space, this gap, which just makes it easier for the user to see and to read. Line six is just the print function displaying the string. Please confirm your details are correct. Line seven is again another spacer, another empty string, just to create this gap here between this please sentence and this your sentence. Uh, line eight, we're just displaying back the details now. So we've got a print function that displays a string, your username is, and then whatever's in the username or whatever the human being entered in line two. Line nine, you've got a print function displaying your first name is, and that all important comma, and then whatever the user entered in line three is being displayed. Line 10 is the same for last name. And line 11 is just a, a print function that displays a string. Are these details correct? Why or no? Now we're not doing anything with that, but it gets your, it sets us up for the next step uh, when we continue our journey through coding. And that's it. That's the input function.